Okay. Welcome back. This is the second part of the orientation because my other file was already too large. So I had to cut it off and I'm starting over again. Um, so I'm going to continue. So we left off on the syllabus. Make sure that you print it out. You'll have um, next on your Blackboard exam information that is uh, relevant to your specific class. And then how my course is graded, which is this is the same information that appears on your syllabus. Okay. So this is just an overview. Uh, please go over this information more uh, slowly because I've already talked for more than an hour and I haven't even gone through half of this information here. Okay, we have another tab with uh, student technical resources. Um, if you need support with Blackboard, you need to contact Distance Education, okay? I don't um, have access to the technology behind Blackboard, so if you can't log in or the Blackboard doesn't show up for you, you need to call Distance Learning and their information is uh, here. If you have problems with your password, you can call the help desk. Um, if you need to have issues with your financial aid, I've provided just general information here. If you wanna do a browser check, you can have that information there as well. <coughs> okay. Um, then you have information about Cengage. Now these are the pricings, um, and these can be updated by Cengage. I'm not sure if these are the same prices that they continue to have, but I believe that they are. Um, but um, you can purchase the access for one semester, for a year, or for two years. It's up to you, okay? Most students just buy the access for one semester, and that's gonna give you unlimited access to all of your classes for that one fee of $119.99, okay? Or whatever the fee is. Right now, we'll go in there and check if they've updated it, uh, but I believe it's still that amount. Uh, but um, you'll have um, information here on how to access Cengage from Blackboard, how to link your account. So it's just uh, very useful information that you can go over, and I'll show you that um, how to do it yourself. And then um, a flyer about um, Cengage, um, how many books they have, the disciplines, um, just um, a whole bunch of information. And they started implementing this unlimited product in August of 2018. So um, it's been out there. Uh, it's been working great for them. So um, just this is just some general information that you can go over. I've included some Cengage videos that explain um, Cengage. Um, we have a Cengage resource link for students. So if you click on that link, it'll take you to Cengage and it'll take you to where you can be able to search up information or whatever the case might be. Um, and then I have three videos of why unlimited, what is unlimited, and how to register and log in. Okay, so I'm gonna let you all view those videos on your own time. Just click on the link and it should direct you to a video and then the video will stop, okay? So um, that is um, how, um, you access it, let me close this window. <coughs> okay, let me go back. And then um, you'll have, or you'll see, um, anytime you see this circular little thing here, I don't know how to explain it, uh, but that little image, that basically means it's a Cengage link. So every time that you see this circular blue thing, um, if you click on the link, it's going to take you out of Blackboard and into Cengage. Okay, now the only way you can access my assignments is through Blackboard. Okay, so I've had students say, Well, miss, I log in into Cengage and your course is not coming up. No, it's not going to come up. Why? Because in order for you to access my course, you have to first log in into Blackboard. Then, once you're in Blackboard, you click the link that I provide for the specific class. Okay, every class will have a different link. And then from that link, you'll be taken into my class. So in order for you to access my assignments, you have to click that link in Blackboard. You cannot access it by just going into Cengage. My, my course is integrated with uh, Cengage, so the only way that you can access it is through Blackboard. Okay? And I'll show you a little bit how to create or how to go into Blackboard. I just wanna explain, every time that you see that little diagram or that little circular thing, um, it means that if you click on it, you'll be taken to Cengage. Now, before I move on to Cengage, I'm going to finish explaining Blackboard. Um, the second tab that you have here um, is um, your course con 
content. Oh, let me let me exit the preview. Okay, content. Um, right now I'm in student view, but because the course hasn't started yet, I won't be able to see anything. Okay, this is just um, this is my view. This is the instructor view, but I'm gonna use it so I can be able to show you what your course will look like. What's gonna happen is every week a folder is gonna pop up. Okay. So you won't have access to the whole 16 weeks. Every week I'm gonna make available a different week. So the only thing you should see week number one is this folder right here, okay? So every week you'll have a folder and we'll I'll put here during week one, we're gonna do the course introduction. We're gonna review all of the information under the Start Here tab and we're gonna cover chapter one. And then you're going to have your syllabus and course orientation quiz for attendance purposes. That is very, very important. Okay. Now, I usually like to include a quote for the week. Um, it kind of motivates students. Um, it just gives them, you know, something to think about. Okay. And then every week, you'll, a new, every week that passes, a new folder is going to come up. Um, and I include what we're going to cover. So let's say, for example, on week three, we're going to cover chapter three, which is the double entry framework. And I'm reminding students that on Monday, the college is closed. Okay. Now, every week, if you click on it, let me open week three, for example, for you. Um, you'll have chapter three overview. You're going to have an overview of the chapter, which is just a high level overview of what is going to be discussed. Um, this is what you're going to be learning in the chapter. Okay. Now we have learning activities. What's going to happen? Well, you need to read the chapter. We need to read chapter three, and then you need to download and review your PowerPoints. I've included them. If you click on that little link there, it'll open up your PowerPoints. I'm not gonna do that right now because it does take a while to load and I don't wanna delay it anymore. But if you see a little, uh, if it's blue and it's underlined, you can click on it and it'll open it up for you. You can download the file, save it, whatever works for you. And then you're gonna have a lecture video, okay? Um, the, the lecture videos are uh, going to be intended to help guide you in certain problems. I'm not going to cover all of the problems like I stated before, but I pick and choose a couple of problems from your homework and I go over them in class or in, um, in the lecture with you. Okay, I've been working during the summer and developing some of these uh, videos. Um, so some of them are available. A lot of them I'm going to be having to do as I go. So be patient with me. Um, I will try to have them up before the week starts. That way from day one you have them available. But I will be having to do a lot of recording. Okay. Um, so, but you will find a video that explains some of the homework problems. That will hopefully help guide you. Okay. So you have a video. And then below that, you're going to have the assignments that need to be completed. So I say here, please complete the following graded assignments. You're going to complete your homework and your quiz in Cengage. And all of your three, uh, week three assignments are due Sunday, and I give you the deadline. So this is how all of my classes are structured. I give you an overview of the chapter, the objectives. What am I going to learn? I give you the learning activities. What do I need to do? Well, I need to read. I need to download the PowerPoint and I need to listen to the video that was uploaded, okay? And then um, I remind you down here of the two assignments or the multiple assignments that need to be completed. This is how it looks, very straightforward, okay? Now, discussions, some classes will have discussions, others will not, okay? If a discussion will be available for your class, I will make it available here and I will let you know in Blackboard. Um, announcements. I do post announcements. I post a lot of announcements. That is how I keep in contact with my students. Um, so I post announcements. This is just a welcome announcement, uh, letting you know of certain information. If you have a question, what information do I need from you? Um, how to contact me? I post reminders. I post reviews. I post extra credit activities. Just general information. Um, and usually when I post a, uh, an announcement, students, um, whatever email account that they have set up in their system, in our system, um, you'll get a, a message in that email account letting you know that I've posted an announcement on Blackboard. That way you stay informed. So make sure that whatever um, account or email account that you have set up, you connect to it um, on a daily basis. That way you can keep up with all of the announcements that I post. 
there's this online chat that you can use to communicate with me. Um, it's available. It's called Pronto. Um, me personally, I prefer a hundred times more a Blackboard message. Um, it just, it's just more organized, more structured. I have more access over it. So, uh, but it is available, um, and um, I do monitor it once in a while. Uh, but if you do need to contact me, please do it through Blackboard messages. Now, if you need to send me a message, you just create a message. Here, you have an option to either message myself, you just find my name, Claudia Mercado, you move me over here to the side where it says recipients, you type a subject, um, question on syllabus, whatever the question might be, and then you put your message, okay? Hello, my name is Claudia, all right? And uh, this is my question, okay? And then you type your question here or your questions, whatever the case might be, and then you just submit it, okay? Once you do this, I get an email alert, okay? And I'm always on my phone, okay? I always have my phone handy. So every time that you send a Blackboard message, it rings on my phone, I got a new message. That way I can go into Blackboard and check. That is why I love Blackboard messages, because it notifies me when a student has sent me a message. And I can be able to see, oh, I have five messages from five different students. I need to go in there and, and see what they need, okay? So this is what happens. You can use it to communicate with me, or you can communicate with any of your classmates, okay? Maybe you want to communicate with any of your other classmates, ask them for their phone number, maybe set up a study time where you all can uh, do a video call and help each other out on your homework. Whatever the case might be, this is a great way to communicate with all of your classmates, okay? That is the best way to communicate with me. Blackboard messages, and then you create a message, and then this is where we chat. It's kind of like an email system within the course. That way I know that you, the student that's emailing me, is from my Introduction to Accounting 1 class. Now, if you email me to my STC email, which I provided on my syllabus and I provide here on the Start Here page, um, if you email me to cmercado5827 at southtexascollege.edu, please let me know your name. Please let me know what class you're in. Your full name. Okay, I've had students email me, Hi, my name is Maria. Okay, um, and then I'm so lost, I don't understand problem number two. Thank you. That's the message I get. Well, that semester I had eight Marias. Okay, I don't know what Maria you are. You're telling me you have questions on problem number two. Okay, you didn't tell me what course you're in. Are you in my payroll class, introduction to accounting, principles of financial accounting, principles of managerial accounting, auditing? What class are you from? I need to know your name, your full name. I need to know what class you're in. I need to know the problem that you're working on. I need for you to provide me with a specific questions, and I need to see you attempt the problem so I can review your work and then provide guidance. I don't give the answer. I provide guidance and I help students learn and understand what they're doing, okay? So it's very important that if you're gonna email me through here, you include all of the information, okay? If you send me a Blackboard message, um, then your full name and your class are not required because I automatically get that information. Now, let me go back to student view. That way I can see how it looks on your end. Um, you're going to have your grades, okay? Um, you're going to have your grade book. And as you complete your assignments, the grades are going to start populating here. Right now, it's the beginning of the semester. You don't have any grades. But as you start completing your grades, they'll populate. Now, most of your grades are, or most of your assignments are going to be done in Cengage. When you complete your assignments in Cengage, um, I've set up the system to where every, every a couple of minutes, every 30 minutes, the system will bring in the grades over to Blackboard. So automatically, the grade is issued in Cengage, and automatically Cengage will send me the grades over to Blackboard. So the only place that you need to look at your grades is here. Why? Because some of your classes have grades that are going to be done manually in Blackboard, either discussions, group projects. Um, you know, anything of that nature that's going to be done in Blackboard. That way, this grade book, which is your My Grades, includes all of your assignments, whether in Cengage or in Blackboard. 
So I give you a total of all of your grades, okay? Um, then we have uh, the course evaluation, which you're gonna have towards the end of the semester uh, that you need to complete. Uh, any course alerts? Now, the last item here is super important, um, and it might be ordered differently depending on the class that you're in, but you're gonna have all of these items show up. The order might be different, but you'll have it. You'll have an, uh, a little tab here that says Cengage Assignments and Resources, okay? If you click on it, you're going to find a whole bunch of circular items here that I already explained to you. If you see something like this, what does it mean? It means that if you click on it, it's going to take you to Cengage, okay? So, um, you have a companion site. If you want to uh, look at the electronic book, you just click on the link here and it'll take you to the book. Um, it has uh, a student dashboard. If you're having problems with Cengage, then you need to contact them. This is a technical support link where you can contact them and, um, you know, ask them any questions you might be having with your specific access. And then you have all of your assignments, okay? Everything. So, if you know that on week number one, you have to complete your Cengage tutorial, your chapter one homework, and your chapter one quiz, you just come in here into the Cengage assignment resources, click on it, and it'll take you to the assignment, okay? It'll take you to the specific assignment that you select. Let's say, for example, I wanna click on chapter 10 quiz, and it's week number one. You won't have access to it, okay? Why? Because these assignments open every week. You will only have access to the assignments for that specific week, okay? Uh, but everything here is available, uh, but this is how you'll access your assignments, okay? So this is how Blackboard is structured. So I've gone over most of the concepts in Blackboard, um, how to chat uh, online. Blackboard messages is the best way to communicate. I'll be posting announcements. This is the start here is where you'll find all of your information. Now we're gonna jump into Cengage, okay? Now Cengage is where you're gonna be completing your assignments. You need to create an account in Cengage and you only need one account for all of your classes, okay? Why? Because if you purchase the Cengage Unlimited Access, that one access, that one username and password is gonna give you access to all of your classes. So whenever you're setting up your account, make sure that you create only one username and one password, and that you write it down in a safe place, that way you don't forget, okay? So, we are getting ready. We've already reviewed all of the information, listened to the orientation. Um, if you go to the course content, uh, let me exit the preview, I forgot I was in student view. Um, make sure that uh, on week number one, um, you go in there and you complete, there is a quiz for attendance purposes. The first thing on your um, Week one is your syllabus and course orientation quiz. If you click on it, it'll take you to complete your quiz, okay? So it'll give you information. You have 30 minutes to complete it, and then you begin, okay? So make sure that you review all of the information. Uh, we're done with all of that. Now we're gonna move on, and now we're gonna create our account in Cengage, okay? So what am I gonna do? If you go to the Start Here tab and you locate the little icon that's for Cengage for your specific course, and remember, this is gonna be different because every class has a different course, but every class will have one of these links available. You're gonna click on it, and it's gonna redirect you into Cengage. You see it's loaded, okay? Don't take a while, um, be patient. Okay, now you'll get a message like this. It says, welcome to Cengage. Your instructor has selected the following materials for your course. I've already uh, selected the, the textbook. 
I don't know why it's saying um, summer 2 here, but it's probably the same textbook. Okay, now it's asking me, if you have an access code, enter it now. So if you went to the bookstore and you bought an access code, then you can just click the link here and enter that code that's on that little card, okay? If you don't have a code, which for example, I don't have a code with me right now, then we're gonna do continue, okay? But it's gonna ask you to, uh, uh, it's gonna give you options. If you purchase the access code, enter it there. If not, click continue, okay? okay. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm a teacher, but it's linking it to my wrong class. It's telling me accounting 1303 V30 summer 2. Let me go back and see what my link says. You see, mine says accounting 1303 V01 intro to accounting 1 fall. Um, so maybe I need to go back in there and check with Cengage. But regardless, these are the steps that you need to follow, okay? This is the correct textbook that you need, which is... Uh, College Accounting. Um, I did use it during the summer term. Uh, maybe that's why it's showing up here. I don't know uh, because I did teach through the, uh, the summer. But regardless, this is the book you need and you are giving options. Okay. So the first option is you pay for materials individually for a single term, $130. What this $130 will do, it'll give you offer. It'll give you access to just one term of the electronic book, okay, and Cengage. Now, what I recommend everybody purchase is Cengage Unlimited. What that gives you is access to the textbook electronically, to Cengage Unlimited, uh, to Cengage uh, where you're gonna be completing your assignments. It's gonna give you access to all of your Cengage course materials, to a full library of textbooks, and a hard copy textbook rental for eligible courses. So if you need a physical book, I'm, I'm still very old school. Um, this online ebook thing, I have problems getting used to. I still prefer a hard copy book. If you're more like me and you want an actual physical book, you can get a copy um, if you just pay $7.99 of shipping. They'll ship you a copy and then once the semester ends, you ship it back to them. They'll uh, rent it to you. So you have that option available with Cengage Unlimited and it costs less. It costs $119.99. So it's a no-brainer, okay? This is cheaper than this, and it's gonna give you more things, more access. So I would buy this, okay? So if you wanna purchase it, you just um, uh, click um, <coughs> on the link, and it'll ask you for your uh, you know, you have the, op the option of buying four month, 12 month, or 24 month, and then you can just enter your credit card information. I'm not gonna do that right now. I don't have any money right now. This is what most students say. My financial aid hasn't kicked in, miss. Okay, I'm gonna start my free trial. Okay. Okay. So, um, it's going to have um, information here. You have to enter your information. And I'm just going to create, you know, information. I'm not going to put um, address, one, two, three, McAllen, Texas, you know, whatever. I'm just going to create a fake account right now, right here. One, two, three, Sunshine Boulevard. Let's put here, okay. You put your address, you put your zip code, okay, you put your state, and of course put the correct information. I'm, I'm faking this because I'm not going to be putting my address here in front, uh, 78572, I don't know what that is, okay, so you just fill this in, okay, okay, address not found, so I guess you need to enter a good address, okay. So you're gonna basically uh, fill out all of this information um, and then um, um, you're gonna put your payment information. Well, I guess I'm going to have to, you know, you're gonna fill this in, 
it's going to take you to the next section, which I can't do that because, well, maybe if I put, um, um, just an address here. Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to use that address. That's an old address I had. Okay. You're gonna enter your payment information, okay? Uh, either you can pay with a credit card or you can pay with PayPal, and then you, you're gonna enter your card number and your expiration and all of that good stuff, and I'm not gonna enter that information. And then um, it's telling you here that you have a seven day free trial period. Now, um, I'm a little bit confused because it's telling me seven days. Um, last semester, if I recall correctly, they were giving 14 day free trial. I don't know if it's because the semester hasn't started yet and I'm doing this recording um, a couple of days before the semester ends. So I'm basically recording this lecture on August the 20th um, to be prepared for when the semester starts on Monday, August the 24th. Um, so I don't know if once the semester starts, because the semester hasn't started, they'll update that information. I can't um, let you know at this point in time. But right now it's showing a free seven day trial period Last semester it was showing 14 days, so I don't know if that information will be updated or not. But just know that you do have a trial period, um, and then um, once you enter that information, you won't be charged until after it expires. So that way you'll continue having access to it, okay? And once you fill out this information, you can start your trial, okay? Um, so I'm not going to do that, but this is basically what you have to do if you have any questions or support um, out here, you can go ahead and you can go ahead and um, contact support and do it. Okay, but this is how you would create the account, and then once you start that, you can start your free trial right here. And like I said, you're not gonna get billed until after the uh, trial period ends. Okay, now I'm gonna exit here, and I'm gonna exit the preview, and I'm gonna go in with my access because <coughs> I have instructor access to show you how um, it'll look, okay? So once you go into, once you click on the link, of course you'll look a little bit different because I do have instructor access, but you'll basically have access to the same thing. Okay. okay. You won't have a tab for course or users, you'll only have these three tabs um, at the end, okay? I have these two because I am the instructor. Um, so the first one is basically your assignments. You're going to be able to see the assignments that are available for that week. Okay? I have all of the assignments because, like I said, I am the faculty. But you'll basically have all of the assignments under under the assignments tab. You'll be able to locate your assignments. Um, on your gradebook, you'll be able to locate your grades. Now, I still don't have any students that have registered for my course because the semester hasn't started. But once they register, uh, the gradebook will be populated and you'll have a gradebook of your work on your end, and I'll have the gradebook of all of you on my end, okay? And then we have another uh, folder that, um, or a little tab that is your study tools. From here, you can access your electronic book. You have study plans, you have other tools, and you have Office 365, okay? To me, the most important thing is your electronic book because you need to read, okay? So once you click on that, you'll be redirected to Mind tab, which is where uh, you'll have access to your electronic book. And then um, you can uh, just read, uh, you know, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, um, so on and so forth. So let's say, for example, we want to read chapter one. You click on it, and it'll give you. Uh, like a little table of contents of everything that's going to be covered in the chapter. Let's say, for example, you're doing your quiz and the question asks about corporations, okay? You want to go specifically to the corporation section, you can just click this link and it'll take you to the section of the book that deals with corporations, okay? Um, so on and so forth. Uh, now, what I love about um, MindTab is that it reads to you, okay? So, it basically, it starts with the chapter introduction, um, all of this good stuff. Now, if 
you either have some type of disability or just don't like to read, um, it has a reader for you. There's this little man up here, uh, like that's speaking. If you click on it. Chapter introduction. Learning objectives. Careful study of this chapter should enable you to. LO1 describe the purpose of accounting. LO2 describe the accounting process. LO3 define GA8. So you chapter, see? Introduction. Chapter introduction. So you see, it reads to you. If you use this little reading or the speaking person here, it'll read you the chapter. Okay? Um, and you can format it, you can print, you can highlight, you can take notes here, highlight, take notes. There's a lot of resources that you can use. It has a glossary um, of all of the terminology. Um, I love the flashcards because they basically give you uh, the like concepts and then you can flip the card and it gives you the definition. Um, um, it's just a, a great way to study. It helps you study. Uh, so it just, it's, it's very useful. Um, just for you know refreshing your mind to see if you understood what you read okay. so there's just a lot of things that you can do here feel free to click around you're not going to break anything uh, you can highlight you can have the reader you can do the index cards um, anything that will help you um, you can read okay so um, that's how you access your ebook let me close this out so if you go to study tools you can just click ebook and it'll take you to the ebook there's study tools. Um, it has, depending on the chapters, you'll have different study tools available for the chapter. It gives you your textbook information. So this is just information that you can utilize to uh, prepare. There's blank forms that you can use, journals, stuff like that. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the area that you're going to be using the most is the assignments. That is where you're going to be completing your assignments. Okay. Now let me show you what a quiz is going to look like. Okay. I'm going to preview it as a student. Right now I'm an instructor view. Okay. So it's going to give you information about your quiz. Like for example, for this class, it's telling you it's telling you that this is the first take. You have two tries. Um, the test needs to be completed in a single session. Okay. Um, and then you can start the quiz. Okay. You have one hour to take the test. Gives you the amount of time. Okay. So this quiz is 10 questions long. It has different types of questions. This is, for example, fill in the blank question. You select the answer, whatever works for you. Okay. We have multiple choice questions. Um, so it's just, you just go through the questions and you answer the question. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, guess. Uh, I'm not going to read through it. I'm just going to figure out, you know, just put an answer. Um, just so you can see how it will, uh, uh, how um, the system will check your um, the test automatically. See, I don't even know what I'm clicking here. But let's just finish it up. Um, okay. And whatever. So you're gonna you're not gonna do what I did. You're gonna read each question and you're gonna answer it carefully. But make sure that you answer all of your questions. After you've answered all of your questions, then um, you can submit your test for grading. So it tells you here that you've completed ten out of the ten questions. You've got a calculator in case that you need it. If you identify an error on your test, you can report it. So you answer your questions here, and when you're done, you submit the test for grading, okay? That's what's going to happen, okay? And it's going to ask you, are you sure? Yes, okay? And here it'll tell you, oh, I got a 30, okay? I need to go back and reread the chapter, and I need to take the test again and try to get a better grade. So it's telling you, you got a 30. And you've taken this test one time, so you have one more time to take it. Okay, that's what it's telling you. Once you take the test, if you go into your grade book, um, you'll see your grade populated. For me, it's not showing because I'm in an instructor view, but it'll automatically populate in your grade book. Okay? 
So, quizzes are very simple. Quizzes are intended to help see if you understood what you've read. It's more terminology based, fill in the blank, matching, multiple choice kind of a thing, okay? Terminology based, okay? Easy peasy, okay? That should be done by you being able to read. Now you can use your notes, you can use your book as you're completing your quizzes, okay? Um, this is an online class. I am not monitoring you like a hawk. And you know what? Life is not about memorizing. Life is about learning. And a lot of the times we learn because we do things repetitively, okay? And, and those are the things that we do most often. And I don't expect you to memorize a book because the book that we have are huge. Do I have that information memorized? No, okay? My, my brain will not have the capacity to memorize everything. And I don't expect you to memorize. But you know what? There's certain things that we need to learn and I will focus on those things and I'm gonna drill you on those things. Now, your homework is gonna be a little bit more different. I'm gonna show you a homework that is more application based, okay? So once you do your homework, I'm gonna preview it as a student so that way you'll see what it is. <coughs> once again, it, takes, it tells you that this is your first take of two tries. For your homeworks, your homework, remember, they're not uh, timed. You can take as long as you want. So I'm gonna start my assignment. Okay, let's see how it looks. So for uh, homework number three in this particular course, you're gonna have seven problems. All of them say all go on it, right? What does that mean? That means that every student is gonna have a different question. Okay, that way you don't, same concept, different numbers. That way you all don't, okay, because I know um, I'm a student and I have kids and I've seen my kids, uh, be on the phone with their friends. Okay, you take the first uh, test or the first attempt, you get it wrong, and then we'll see what you got wrong, figure it out, and then we'll do it again, and then we'll alternate. And, and kids, or you know, students figure out a way to, around the system, they try to. Okay, I'm not here to try to prevent students from cheating. You know, we shouldn't be cheating because we are studying accounting because it's gonna help us, either whether we open our own business, whether we go work in accounting, whether we work in business in general, accounting is super important. So we don't want to cheat ourselves because when we cheat, we don't cheat others. You don't cheat my, you know, you don't cheat me by me giving you a false grade. You cheat yourself because you're not learning. Okay. So these problems are intended to help strengthen your ability to be able to analyze and apply what has been learned in the chapter. So. Um, there's different types of questions, um, you know, uh, some of them longer than others. Do not be intimidated by the information provided. The textbook provides excellent examples of how to complete your, um, your problems. Now, um, if you look here, every question, there's ebook. It tells you this particular chapter or this particular problem deals with these objectives right here. So if you need to go back and review these objectives, you just click on it and it'll take you back to the electronic book so you can go back and review those concepts, okay? It'll take you back to the areas that apply to the specific problem. So that way you can read through this information. If you wanna go back or forth, that is what these errors are for right here, okay? Now, I love it because you also have a show me how video that explains to you how to solve the problem. So if you click on the video, it'll give you a short video. This is probably your first chance to enter transactions into T accounts. So let's take a moment to think about the accounting equation and the figure you see. So you see, it gives you a video of, and it's gonna explain to you information that applies to the problem and how to solve the problem. It also gives you a calculator you have access to printing the item if you desire, and you can report, if you find an error, you can report that content error right there. Now down here, there's check my work. Now depending on the class that you're taking, um, are the check my works available? Some classes are gonna have uh, five, others are gonna have three, others are gonna have two. It depends on the chapter, it depends on the content, it depends on a lot of different factors. But I do give students some check my works availability, okay? Uh, like I said, it varies by class. 
So it will not be five for all the time. It will not be five for all classes. It will vary. Just know that it will let you know down here how many check my works you have remaining. Okay? So now let me see. All of these problems are fairly long. Um, I wanted to attempt one. This is even longer. Okay. This is the statement of memory equity. Let me try this one. This one should be short. So they're asking you to complete a, an income statement. So they provide you with information. So uh, let me see. Revenues. We have delivery fees of 10800 And I'm just going to quickly solve this. Um, I'm going to try to solve it. Um, and um, to show you okay how to do it now I'm going to enter some information incorrectly that way you can see how um, um, it will uh, let you know that it's wrong okay um, I'm going to enter like I said some information incorrect okay So that would be calculator. So 1900 plus 500 is going to be 2400. Okay, and I'm just doing this to show you in case you make a mistake how to fix it. Okay. So I worked out the problem. I think I got it right. Okay. So you're working the problem. You don't know. What you're going to do is you're going to click this button down here that says check my work okay and i have five tries in this particular problem okay look what it does it shows you the ones that you got right and it shows you the ones you got wrong okay and then it gives you some feedback okay so now i know that i have four more tries and i have one two three four things i need to fix okay now you're going to focus on those things that you need to fix now I knew this was wrong. That one is wages expense and it is 1900. That's correct. Now rent expense, I put it for the incorrect amount. It should be a thousand. So then that's gonna bring it up to 2900. And then um, calculator, oh, 10,800 minus 2900, that's 79. Okay. So now I've made some revisions to my work, focusing on the incorrect items okay if you got it correct don't mess with it guys okay just focus on the ones that you got wrong so I reviewed my information I reassessed the problem I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check my work again <coughs> voila guess what they're all right now okay all of them have check marks okay so I can move on to the next problem okay you still had three more tries, which you didn't need because on the second try, you were able to fix everything. But if you if you continue to have problems, you will continue to have tries until you run out of those attempts. After you run out of those attempts, then you cannot make any more changes. You have to submit what you have, and that's it. Okay. And then if you don't score well enough, you have that second try where you can restart the whole assignment all over again. Now. This is what you would do for each problem. You would continue with the next problem and then you would try to solve it, so on and so forth. Now, here down here you have several um, options. You can email the instructor. If you email me, what's gonna happen is the system is automatically going to generate an email to my STC email. And it's going to show me a screenshot of this, what you're working on, okay? And then in there, you can write me a message. Hey miss, I'm working on exercise 311A. Okay, and um, I don't seem to understand how to obtain the first part of my uh, statement of owner's equity. Uh, the option is not available, whatever, whatever. Okay, you can email me and then I'll get a message and then I can respond to you. That's an option. Now, you have the second option, okay, and this one's very important. So let's say, for example, you have allotted that every day you're going to work an hour on your homework. Okay, so you're working on your homework, your hour is up you're not done. You only got to work on two problems, okay? 
you want to save your work because you want to resume it tomorrow you're going to click the button that says save and exit what is that going to do that's going to save your work and it's going to take you out of the, the homework assignment okay tomorrow you can resume it you can just click on that homework assignment again you'll open it up and whatever you worked on the, the prior day you'll have it available okay when you're done with all of your seven problems they're all completed, you reviewed them, you're done. Then you submit assignment for grading, okay? At that point only, do you submit it for grading. Okay? At that point, the system's gonna calculate the grade for you and it's gonna issue you a grade, okay? So, step number one, you open your homework, you work on the problem, you look, you review the information on the ebook, you look at the videos, and if you see here, most of the problems, not all of the problems, but most of them will have a video. And if they don't have a video, you can always go back and uh, review the problem on the uh, textbook. They have fabulous examples there. But look over the textbook, look at the video, try to solve the problem, use your check my works down here, you know, finish the whole exercise, and then submit for grading. Once you're done, you submit for grading. It's gonna give you a warning, are you sure? And you say, yes, I'm sure, or you know what, let me continue taking the assignment. You have two options. I'm going to submit for grading. And then it's going to give you your grade. I only answered one question. I got 14. I have a 14% right now on my assignment. Okay. Now, I do want to encourage all students, when you're completing your assignments, um, if you do not score a 70% or better, on any of these assignments, please use the second attempt provided to try to improve your grade, okay? Um, the homework assignments are long, they're tedious, but in accounting, this is not a class where I can just talk for hours and hours about the content. This is more application-based. You need to do it to be able to learn, okay? This is more hands-on. That's why I give you homework. Now, the tests, um, the problems on your tests are coming straight from your homework, okay? So it's very important that you complete your assignments. Now, something very important that I need to let you know. If you do not complete your assignments, you will not have anything to study with, okay? After you complete your assignments, your assignments are open Monday through Sunday. On Sunday night at 11 p.m., they close. The following morning, you're going to have answers, the solutions to your homework and quizzes. So you can go back and review okay if you did not complete your homework or your quiz you will not have access to the answers in order to have access to the answers you must complete the assignment that is critical okay so it is very important that you complete all of your assignments okay so that is how you complete your uh, assignments on Sengage Okay, I've already shown you how to access the book. You go to the study tools, and you can access it from there. Your assignments, you can just select the assignment that you want to complete, and it'll take you to it. Now, if you're in Blackboard, for example, um, you can go to your um, Sengage Assignments and Resources tab, okay? and you have a list here. So if you want to just go to the ebook, you can just click the link right here, and it'll take you to the electronic book directly okay okay so if you want to complete the homework all you, you know if you're looking you have your syllabus with you and it says here well I need to complete chapter one homework okay if you're gonna click on the chapter one homework and it will automatically take you to your chapter one homework this is an easier alternative to accessing your assignments okay it'll take you to your assignments Okay. So you can access your assignments either through the Start Here tab, clicking this link, and it'll take you to your STC, uh, to your Sengage account, or you can just go to Sengage Assignments Resources, select the assignment that you want to complete, click on it, and it'll take you to Sengage so you can work on that assignment. So that is how you um, access your assignments in Sengage. Okay. Please, you have a free trial period. There is no excuse for you not to complete your assignments uh, from day number one. Please do not fall behind. 
please start working on your assignments immediately. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Remember, preferably, the best way to communicate with me is through Blackboard messages um, right here. This is where you'll send me a message. Um, communicate with me. If you cannot meet with me or if you have a question, I schedule an appointment outside of my office hours so we can communicate. Remember, I only answer or I only review my messages Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. So please try to get your questions in during the week. Okay? Coordinate your time. If I have time or if I have an opportunity to do so, I will check my email randomly or my Blackboard on a weekend. But I do not guarantee that I will get back with you on a weekend. Okay? Um, if I can't, then that question will have to wait until Monday. If you want your answers, your questions answered, please send me your questions Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. <coughs> so that is basically um, how my course is structured in Blackboard, how to access your account in Cengage, how to access your assignments to Cengage directly from Blackboard. This is the only way that you can access them. You have to go through Blackboard, select on the links that I've embedded in here, and then uh, go to the specific assignments. If you have any questions, I am here for you. I know these are challenging times. Um, you know, I just ask that you all stay safe. If you're having to go out there and work, you know, take all necessary precautions. Um, wash your hands. Um, you know, wear glasses or something to protect your eyes because the virus can go get through your eyes as well. Wash your hands, wear gloves, whatever you need to do, guys. Uh, we've been in it since... Um, March, very August, um, people are dying in our communities, uh, so many people are getting infected, uh, we need to do whatever we can in our part to stay safe. Um, so I'm here for whatever is needed, I'm looking forward to a great fall 2020, I am uh, hoping to get to meet all of you, um, you know, get to know you, uh, and just know that you can count on me for anything that you need. Um, communication is key, very important that you communicate with me, um, and I'm here to assist you in anything I can, um, and I look forward to a great semester, and make sure that you do read your chapters, that you listen to those lectures that I post, that you practice, um, and if you have any questions, you always reach out to me. Okay? So that's the end of my orientation. I wish you a great semester, and until next time.